This week, the war goes from armies to guerrillas. On the 18th, we head to Missouri for a tragedy. There was a man named Andrew Altman, a unionist, but well respected by his neighbors, who are secessionist. But the Confederate guerrillas don't have that same respect. Colonel Joseph Porter, a Confederate guerrilla leader, had Altman capture and freed him, having his men escort him into the woods. And Altman never came back. News soon reaches the Union camp, and it's just another point on most of Confederate crimes committed in the Show Me State. The Union has grown tired of it, and the anger reaches a boiling point. On the 8th, a Provost Marshal, W.R. Strachan, under orders from Colonel John McNeil, sends a letter to Porter, demanding Altman be released or 10 prisoners will be executed. Back to the 18th. Altman is nowhere. 10 Confederate prisoners or sympathizers are all lined up and shot. Strachan is accused of taking a bribe from a woman to free her husband, along with raping her. On a less depressing topic, a bloody battle. This series is nothing but rainbows and sunshine. There is a fort in the Indian Territory. Well, multiple, but right now we are only interested in one. Old Fort Wayne. Rear General James G. Blunt of the Union controls a division. He is moving against the Indian Brigade under Colonel Douglas H. Cooper of the Confederacy. After an impressive night march, General Blunt opens up the battle on the morning of the 22nd by sending the Kansas Cavalry into the Confederate camp. Rebel pickets hold the cavalry off long enough for the tired and untrained 1,500 Confederates to form a battle line. The howitzers under Cooper open fire onto the Union cavalry until Blunt brings up his own heavy guns. After a long-range artillery duel, the full Union division arrives and charges the Confederate center, breaking it and causing a Confederate rout. The Union suffered 14 casualties to the Confederates' 150, having taken the Old Fort and the northern entrance to the Arkansas River in the Indian Territory. Then there are Sickles. He throws himself into all sorts of seances with Miss Lincoln. He seems deeply regretful for his temporary psychosis that made him shoot Philip Barton Key II. That's where the week ends. A horrible atrocity and a minor battle. I wish I could read more. That's where the week ends. A horrible atrocity and a minor battle. I wish I could report more. But there is nothing more. And the coming elections are tiring. If we learned one thing from this week, it's that even if it's only minor things that are happening, the war is still terrible. Deepest apologies for this being such a short week. Really, it was mostly due to the upcoming, or, well, now released, but, you know, recording and time differences and all. Second, there'll be more video. In addition, life has been hectic for the one-man team and new technology. Next week shall be quite longer and include in-depth coverage for the upcoming elections and already happened elections, but narrative economy and all. And the week after that shall be the elections. I hope to see you then.